Nehemiah chapter number 2, verse number 11 tonight, and this is what my Bible says. So I came to Jerusalem, and I was there three days. And I arose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither were there any beasts with me, save the beasts that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley and even before the dragon well and to the dung port and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. And then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Then said I unto them, ye set, see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come. And let us build up the walls or the wall of Jerusalem that we be no more a reproach. You know, there's a lot of pastors that are pastoring churches that it would be better off if they would just resign that church and go get a job and leave that little church alone. And let a man of God have it. Because they're a reproach. To the gospel. There's a lot of evangelists that are pulling trailers up and down our highways. That really. They have no business. Evangelizing. They're a reproach. To the gospel. A lot of ministries that are being built up. That really. Really should not even. Put God in the same category of their ministry. And they were reproach. To the gospel. Then I told them. Of the hand of my God. Which was good upon me. As also the king's words. That he had spoken unto me. And they said let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands. For this good work. Chapter 4. Verse number two. What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? I want to preach tonight with the help of the Lord. On guarding the stones of Pentecost. Guarding the stones of Pentecost. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this privilege that I have to stand behind this sacred desk. Lord God Almighty, I don't take it lightly tonight, Lord, to be able to stand here. Oh, God, may you help me to preach what you've laid upon our hearts for tonight. God, in the name of Jesus, would you come in your power and your glory. Let your anointing, oh God, be upon us tonight to preach your word without fear, without favor. <laughs> Lord, use us tonight, oh God. Use your word tonight, Lord, to accomplish what it pleases. Challenge us tonight, Lord, through your spirit and your word. Hallelujah. Change us, oh God, by your power. I love you, sweet Jesus, and I thank you tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm glad tonight to be Pentecostal. 
I'll be honest with you. I would not want to be anything else. I'm thankful tonight for my heritage. And I realize more than ever before. My responsibility. To guard. What God has given me. I realize more than ever before. That I must guard as a pastor. Of my church to guard. What God has given us. To guard for my boys and my family. Amen. The Pentecostal heritage that we have tonight. Oh, what a blessing that it is. I want to tell you something. You know, anything, I've always been told, anything worth having, you know, it doesn't come cheap. But there's a price to pay. And uh, anything that we have here tonight, the facility that we enjoy as we come each year to Bethel Holiness uh, Church to have camp meeting. Amen. Somebody somewhere has paid a price for what we have here tonight. It didn't just happen. But somebody had to put in some sweat and tears and some had to put in money and some had to put in a lot of hours of, of hard labor and work and, and just in the last year or a couple of years that they even remodeled here and made this amen even more comfortable and, and, and added different things and somebody had to pay a price for what we enjoy tonight. It didn't just happen overnight. Somebody spent time. Amen. This camp meeting, it didn't just happen this week. Somebody has been paying a price to get ready for this meeting. And I want you to understand tonight what we have in Pentecost and, and what we have and what we enjoy and the presence of God that we feel tonight. Uh, amen. Just did not come to this building because we showed up. Uh, somebody a long, long time ago uh, made up their mind they were going to pay the price. Uh, somebody a long time ago uh, made up their mind that they would not uh, allow the Pentecostal heritage uh, Amen. To die or to go out. But they've been paying a price. What we feel here tonight did not start in buildings. It did not start a man with amen, cathedrals and, and uh, beautiful chandeliers and beautiful plush carpets. Amen. It did not start a man with preachers with 50 degrees behind their name. It did not start in stained glass windows and fellowship halls. I want you to know what we have tonight a man somebody a long time ago shut themselves in a closet and said I will not let this thing die I will not let the fire go out I will not even allow amen the adversary or the enemy amen to destroy or tear down or rob what we enjoy tonight in the presence of God somebody somewhere has paid a price and I've come to tell you tonight Tonight, that if we are going to continue to enjoy this, if we're going to continue to be blessed by this, if we're going to continue a man to receive of this, somebody's going to have to keep paying a price. Somebody's going to have to keep fighting. Somebody's going to have to keep singing. Somebody's going to have to keep praising. Somebody's going to have to keep preaching. Somebody's going to have to continue to pray and hold on to God or we'll lose what we have tonight hey man I want to preach to you tonight about some stones of Pentecost if you were preaching this message tonight you might use something else but you're not I'm preaching tonight and I'm going to preach what I want to preach because I believe God has given us some precious stones Amen. Some stones in the wall of Pentecost. Amen. That I believe we must guard and protect. Amen. Lest amen, the adversary rob them tonight. I've asked some young men or some men tonight to help me. Amen. Read some scripture verses for the sake of time. Amen. I want them to help me tonight. And Amen. Whoever has Psalms 133 verse 1 through 3, would you please read it loudly?
There's a stone that I believe tonight we must guard. A stone that we must guard in this wall at Pentecost. If we'll continue to have what we have tonight, somebody is going to have to help us guard the stone of unity. Somebody's going to have to be willing to pay a price tonight. Uh, amen. To guard the precious stone of unity. The devil tonight would love to come in and chisel away uh, and rob that precious stone uh, of unity. The Lord said how good it is. Uh, how blessed that it is uh, for brethren to dwell together. Uh, amen. In unity. Uh, he said a house that is divided against itself. Uh, it cannot stand. Uh, he said, amen, that it's, or it's been known to be said, united we stand, amen, divided we fall. Except God built the church, amen, we labor in vain tonight. That's, that's one big problem that we have in this day and hour. Everybody wants to build the church the way they want to build it. Everybody wants to build a church of their idea. Everybody wants to build a church that fits them and makes them comfortable, amen, and makes them feel at home and want things to go their way. But that's not what the Bible says. For the Bible says, Jesus said himself, he said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of church, amen, that I want to be involved in. That's the kind of church that I want to promote. That's the kind of church that I am fighting for tonight. Amen. I want you to understand tonight. Amen. That stone of unity. How many know for them to receive Pentecost? On the day of Pentecost, the Bible said when it was fully come, they were in one accord and one place. Amen. In order for them to receive the power of God and the Holy Ghost, they had to have unity. How come to preach to you tonight? Amen. They had to have unity to receive Pentecost and it's going to take unity for us to keep Pentecost hallelujah if you want God to continue to work you want God to move in your church you want God to move in your ministry you want God to move in your camp meetings and your revivals I'm telling you somebody is going to have to pay a price amen for the stone of unity we've got to get together amen and be what God wants us to be for his glory Amen. I want to tell you tonight, friend. Amen. Somebody somewhere. Amen. It's going to have to stand up. Amen. With their spiritual fighting clothes. Amen. Their spiritual armor. Amen. You're going to have to make up your mind. Amen. Who you want to be a part of. You've got to make up your mind. Whose side you're on anyway. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? I mean that next time somebody comes to you in a church. Amen. Wherever you may attend. And the next time they come. And they start backbiting. And they start gossiping and they start downing your pastor or they start downing amen the musician or they start talking about sister so and so or running down brother so and so I wish somebody would stand up amen and say no sir amen not this time not this time you got me before you got me involved in that mess last time I'm not gossiping about my brother I'm not going to run down the church down the road I have made up my mind I'm going to stand for the stone of unity and I'm going to keep the power of God in the midst of the church like he desires to do it. Amen. We've got to guard that precious stone of unity, brother, to the devil. Amen. Can get in so quickly. Amen. You allow that stone to be taken from the wall. The devil's going to creep in and he'll begin to tear things up. It happens and it happens quickly. Amen. A matter, just a few words spoken from somebody's tongue or mouth can destroy somebody. It can destroy a church. It can destroy, amen, a family. It can destroy, amen, the devil uses it so mightily, amen, and so, amen, in a way, amen, people don't even realize that it's happening, amen, it can happen in the midst of revival. It can happen in the midst of camp meeting. It can happen in the midst of a Sunday service, amen, if we allow the devil to take the stone of Pentecost, 
the stone of unity. Somebody's going to have to guard it tonight. Amen. There's another stone that I want to preach to you about, and that is the stone of faithfulness. Luke chapter 16 tonight. There's a stone the devil would love to rob. And from many he has. The stone of faithfulness. The stone of faithfulness. I'm talking about being faithful to God. I'm talking about being faithful to the things of God. I'm talking about, amen, where the Bible said it's the faithful folks that are going to inherit the kingdom of God. If I make it, brother and sister, if you make it and you stand before the Lord, amen, it will not be here. He says you did a good job. Amen. If you make it and I make it tonight, amen, it will not be by the words of you did your best. If you and I make it tonight, it will not be because, well, you tried. Amen. If we make it tonight, it will not be because of anything else other than we were faithful. Faithful servants. Faithful folks are the people that are going to inherit the kingdom of Almighty God. I must remind you tonight, people do not get crowns for starting this race. People don't get trophies for singing. You don't get a pat on the back for preaching. You don't get a hand clap. Amen. For being a part of a church. Amen. Hey, friend, you don't get anything until you finish this race. Until, hallelujah to God. He said it's to the one that will endure to the end. It's the same that's going to be saved. I believe God's looking for some faithful folks that are going to stand up and be counted on. They're going to be dependent. Amen. God can count. Can God count on you tonight? Or has the enemy crept in and robbed us of so many churches? Amen. In this last hour, amen. The devil's crept in and he's robbed that stone. Amen. Of faithfulness. Amen. Brother and sister. It's a sad day when you can't count on people, amen, to be in the house of God. It's a sad day when you don't know who's going to play your music and you don't know who's going to sing in the choir and you don't know, amen, if brother so and so is going to be there to take the offering and you don't know if sister so and so will be there to teach your class. It's a sad hour, friend, amen, when people are trying to sit back and wonder whether or not they're going to go to church on Wednesday night. It was no question around my house house when church time came get your clothes on we're going to church why because my family raised me up that we're going to serve God we're going to be faithful we're going to support the church we're going to support the pastor we're going to support the ministry we're going to support heaven we're going to be faithful he can count on us hey amen God's looking for faithful folks in this hour to be committed, to be dedicated, amen, to the cause, to be dedicated to this gospel and dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, faithful, I'm telling you, faithful, amen, we need folks to be there, amen, I tell you what, I wish I could write a book on all the excuses that I've heard, amen, that people give you, amen, about not being faithful, amen, why they can't come to church, it reminds me of one man that went out knocking on doors one day, he went out there and he said, as he was knocking on somebody's door. He invited him to come to church. And he said, I'd like to invite you to our church this Sunday morning. Amen. Just want you to come and be with us. We'd be glad to have you. If there's anything we could do, you know, just witnessing and inviting them to church. And that man looked at him and said, sir, I can't be there Sunday. He said, well, why not? He said, because I'm out of mayonnaise. Amen. He said, what do you mean? Out of mayonnaise. What does mayonnaise have to do with going to church? He said, well, I just thought one excuse would be just as good as the other. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something 
confessing and our friend. Amen. I'm talking about people that know what it is to be faithful. People that know what it is to be committed. People that are die for this thing. Amen. God needs people that are going to be faithful. And the devil's robbing the stone from our heart. Amen. Sunday after Sunday. Amen. I want to go on because I've got something to tell you. Amen. I want to talk about another stone. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 and Hebrews 12, 14. The devil would like to take away the stone of holiness. He loved to rob that stone. And in many places he has. And in many hearts tonight he has. Little by little he's crept in. And he's chiseled away on the stone of holiness. I'm telling you, I said it the other night, but if there was ever an hour where the church needs to be the church and let the world be the world. It is the hour that we live in tonight. How many know tonight, church, that people are watching us? People are looking at our lives. They're looking at our testimony. I'm not talking, amen, about how long or how short. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, amen, everything about our life. Amen. How many know it's Jesus on the inside, working on the the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Amen. I believe sometimes we are too quick. Amen. We try to get people to the standard before we get them to the Savior. Amen. You can't do that, friend. You got to get them to Calvary. You got to get them to the Savior. And when you get them to the Savior and they fall in love with the Savior, they want to be like the Savior. Hallelujah to God. I'm telling you what tonight, friend, if they're going to be what God is wanting us to be, they're looking at the illustrations of the church. They're looking at the demonstration of the people, amen, that go in and out our doors Sunday after Sunday. Amen. If they're going to find this holiness, if they're going to find purity of heart and godliness and righteousness, amen, they're not going to find it down at the schoolhouse. They're not going to find it, amen, at the Lions Club or the Moose Club. They're not going to find this, amen, at the White House. They're going to have to find it at the church house. It's going to have to begin with us uh, lifting up a standard and telling people that holiness is still in style. Amen. Amen. I believe it tonight. Amen. If there was ever an hour, amen, where I believe, yes, young men and men should look like men and women should look like women. I believe that. Amen. I believe, amen, that we need to have convictions in our life. You know what? Holiness makes people nervous. It ought not make people nervous. It ought to be an everyday living, an everyday walk with Jesus Christ. It's something that I don't do for preachers. I don't do it for camp meetings. I don't do it for anybody. I do it because I love my Jesus. If you're doing it because of anybody else, brother, you're wrong tonight. Amen. You're wrong tonight. If you live the way you live because somebody wants you to. If, amen, somebody's dogging you and prompting you and priming you and pressuring you. Amen. You're under a wrong influence tonight. Amen. It's the influence of the power of God and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost that makes me live the way I live. Amen. I want to say something else while I'm on this. I told you it's going to just load your wagon. Amen. <laughs> amen. I believe that holiness and holy living, amen, ought to be attractive. What do you mean, preacher? Well, I want to tell you something. I believe that, that God and His holiness, it attracts people. Yes, it does. God and His holiness are something about that people, amen, will be drawn to. But I believe, amen, a lot of the holiness that people are preaching and trying to live in this day, friend, amen, it's driving people away. 
Why? Because I believe, amen, it's not the heart of God. Amen. Brother, there's a way to live. There's a holiness standard and conviction that we live and a passion and a love for God that we have that people want more of. They're drawn to it. Amen. Because they see God. They see Jesus. Amen. It's a magnetism. Amen. Brother and sister, you don't have to look. Amen. In such a way that drives people away. Holiness people can still look pleasing and godly unto the Lord. Amen. It don't hurt to put deodorant on. It don't hurt to comb your hair. It don't, are you hearing me tonight? It don't hurt, amen, to fix yourself up a little bit. Amen. Because I believe in this day and time, brother and sister, people want to see God. Amen. They don't want to see something. Amen. That doesn't look attractive. Something. Amen. That's running people away. They want to see something that beholds. Amen. The godliness and holiness. And there's a way to do that that's pleasing unto God. Hallelujah. There's a stone that we must guard and that is holiness. Amen. There's another stone that we've got to guard tonight and that's in James chapter 5 verse 14. There's a stone that we've got to guard tonight. And that's the stone of healing. Satan would love to bring fear to your mind. He would love to bring doubt to your mind. He would love to come and confuse you real good. And tell you God doesn't heal anymore. He would love, and you know what? The sad thing is a lot of people are believing that. And there's a lot of folks, amen, that are believing in this hour that, that amen, the miracles are not of God. And, and there's those that are preaching, teach to you, amen, that, that uh, laying hands on people is not right. And, and, and anointing people with oil, amen, is of the devil. I've heard them say it. I've heard them preach it. But I've come to preach to you tonight, friend, when this old boy gets sick, when I'm hurting in my body, when I, amen, am aching of pain, when I get to a place where I need God to touch me and heal me. Amen, brother and sister. I want somebody to break out of oil. I want them to anoint me. I want them to pray for me. I want them to touch God for me. I want them to have the stone of Pentecost. Amen, within their heart. Amen, that they can touch God and believe God. I'm telling you tonight, friend, we must guard the stone of healing lest we, amen, lose. Amen, the miracles of God. I believe God's still doing miracles. Miracles. I believe he's still touching the sick. I believe he's still healing, opening up their fears. Amen. The eyes of the blind. He's still making the lame to walk. But I'm telling you, we're going to have to guard that stone if we continue to see the power of God in the church. Amen. As he wants to do and desires to do, we must guard the stone of healing. Somebody once again must dare to believe God. Somebody once again, as the devil comes along, and says you've been sick for 25 years. You ain't going to be healed. You've been in every prayer line there is. You've been anointed many times. You'll not be healed. You'll not be touched. Amen. You've heard report after report from the doctor that said, I'm sorry. There's nothing else we can do. We've tried everything we know to do. Amen. Go to this specialist. Amen. Go to this one over here and that one over there. Amen. You, Some of us, amen, sitting in this building tonight. Amen are having to take medication. Amen. Four and five times a day. Every day that you get up. You take them every night before you go to bed. Are you against that? No. Are you against doctors? No. Are you against hospitals? No. Are you for the power of God and miracles? Yes. We just got to one more time dare to believe God to do it again. We run to the arm of flesh. We run to Tylenol. We run to Dr. Know-it-all. Amen. Before we give God a chance to prove his power and his glory in the midst of the church. One more time, he wants to do a miracle in somebody's life. He wants to do miracles more than he ever has before. 
It's not God's fault that he's not doing miracles. Somewhere along the line, somebody let the enemy rob the stone of healing. Amen. I still believe in, 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 in healing. Still, amen, preach it. I still, amen, experience it. Thank God. Amen. God hasn't stopped healing people. People have stopped believing God to heal them. I still read in my Bible, amen, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity, and by his stripe I am healed. Hold a little say, I said by stripes I'm healed. I wish that there's somebody in this building tonight, amen, that needs a healing. Stand up right now. Stand up right now. If you need a healing, just raise your hand and say, Jesus, I believe for that stone of healing. Amen. I believe for the power and the power of God to heal my body. In Jesus' name, I believe you, Lord. Don't let us lose the stone. Don't let us stop believing you. But help these folks that are sick in body. Amen. To receive your touch. To receive your power. I believe it tonight. The devil will not have this stone in my life. I claim, amen, and receive, amen, the healing power of Almighty God tonight. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus, tonight. Thank you, Jesus, tonight for the healing of our bodies that you paid a price for. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's still healing for the church tonight. Amen. We must guard it with our life. We must guard it with our life. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. People have stopped having prayer lines and healing lines because of what we've seen in this last day. I want to tell you what, brother. We have them in our church. I say we have them in our church. We have a Jesus is the answer rally once a month for everybody in the tri-state area to come out. If they're sick, come. If they need deliverance, come. If they need a miracle, come. Amen. Are you charismatic? No. I believe my Bible and I believe my Jesus is still a healer for the sick. Ephesians 1 7, 1 Peter 1 18 19. There's a stone that we must guard. The stone of the blood. The devil would love to have this stone more than any other stone. You're right, Brother Marshall. He can't stand it. Amen. He can't, he can't stand the stone of the blood. This the mention of its name makes hell tremble. Justice, hallelujah. The stone of the blood tonight. He's tried for years to get this stone. He's tried for decades to take out this stone. And in some places, sad to say, he has accomplished it. In some churches, he has managed to do it. Amen. In some song services, he's doing well. In some preacher's messages, amen, he has come along and accomplished exactly what he meant to do. Amen. But I must remind us tonight, amen, that there's still something about this stone. Amen. That we must go with our lives. Amen. We must guard with everything that's within us. This precious stone of the blood. Amen. Brother, he's tried to take it out of our song books. He's tried to take it out of our Bible. He's tried to take it out of our messages. He's tried to take it out of our churches. I want to tell you something. He can do that. But he'll never take away its power. I said he'll never take away its power. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood 
blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can change a drug addict and save him? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can save an alcoholic and set him free? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can take a prostitute off the street, save her and sanctify her, fill her with the Holy Ghost? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's the blood. It's the blood. Power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb tonight. There's power in the blood. It's a stone we've got to guard, church. Amen. We've got to guard it with our life. Amen. Lest we lose the meaning of it. Lest we lose, amen, the significance of the blood of the Lamb because it's the blood that redeemed me. One more time and get excited about the precious blood of Jesus. You ain't always been sitting in a holiness pew. You ain't always acted the way you acted. You ain't always sang amazing grace. You ain't always had that smile on your face. You were once in a pit. You were once forsaken. You were once hopeless. You were once a castaway. You were once, amen, a sinner bound for hell. But the blood, I said the blood of Jesus has made a way for you tonight. You don't think the devil would like to have this stone? You're crazy tonight, friend. He wants this stone. He wants it, amen. He knows what it means. For I read in the Bible where he was the accuser, and he still is, of the brethren. But he wrote there in Revelation. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. Somebody needs to hear that the blood is against Satan. The blood is against against him tonight. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood still saves. The blood still cleanses. The blood still doing what it always did. Ever since the moment they punctured the side of Jesus. Amen. And it flowed down Calvary Street. Amen. It's still flowing for you and me. I read that or hear that song that we sing often in our church. It reaches to the highest mountain. Hallelujah. And it flows to the lowest valley. Hallelujah. It's the blood. Amen. That deal still does. Amen. What it needs to do in my life. It's still the blood. And if I make it to heaven, hallelujah, it's going to be because of the blood. Not what I do, not what I said, not because of who I am. It's because of what he did. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's the blood to that church. The blood. That's all right. The blood still don't excite some folks. It's all right. That's all right. It's all right. Some of you need to go back and take a peek at the pit where you used to be before the blood. Before the blood. Before the blood. Before the blood. Before the blood, I was unworthy. Before the blood, I was a sinner. Before the blood, amen, nobody cared. Before the blood, but the blood has made me worthy to stand here tonight. The blood. The blood. The blood. Oh, God. Oh, he don't like that blood. He don't like the stone of the blood. 
Amen. It's still, it's still redeeming all mankind today. Taking them from a, a road to hell. Putting them on a pathway to heaven. Hallelujah. I got to hurry. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 tonight. The devil would like to rob that precious stone of the Holy Ghost. I know what this world needs. I don't know everything, but I know what this world needs. What this world needs. Is for and it don't matter where it's at. Doesn't matter if it's here in Florida. Doesn't matter if it's in Texas, Ashland, Kentucky. I pray that it is. I pray it's mine. But it really don't matter if it's in Australia or Canada. What this world needs, Brother Smith, is a church to get full of the Holy Ghost. And fire. In the old time way. With an old fashioned experience. Not what I preached about the other night of influence. But an indwelling. Hallelujah. This world. Why? Because I believe the world is sick and tired of put on and fake and imitation and look alike and almost and has been and used to be. A lot of our Pentecostal churches are living, amen, on Papa's blessing and Mamma's experience. We need a church, as our brother said this morning, we need to be that church full of the Holy Ghost and fire tonight. Amen. We've got a guard the stone brother and sister there's people that are coming to our churches amen Sunday after Sunday I don't know about you friend but God God's helping our little church and God's blessing us and we've got folks coming in there that don't look good all the time we got folks coming in there worldly man I mean they don't smell good they're bound by drugs they're bound by alcohol amen they're on their way to hell amen but they come to our church from all over the place they're getting there because they believe in what we preach uh, and they feel the power and the touch and the anointing of God my Bible still tells me amen that the anointing uh, destroys every yoke uh, and when people walk through our door amen brother and sister they don't care about how good you sing uh, they don't care amen how big your classroom is uh, amen or how well the bathrooms are amen arranged uh, they want to know is there anybody in the house uh, that can help me get to Jesus uh, is there anybody anointed uh, to get me through the victory we need the Holy Ghost and fire. I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of people coming to our Pentecostal churches leaving the same way that they came. I'm that's what I'm talking about this stone right here I'll die for it brother I'll preach it to the day I die I know what it means to me there's power that God gave to us there's power that he gave to the church I still believe in Paul's handkerchief I still believe in Stephen's shadow I still believe there's an anointing and a power of God to be a first upon the church of the living God but it's oh, gone for many it's gone from many. Yeah, little by little, the devil came in and he took away the stone of the Holy Ghost and power and fire. Amen. Within our life. Amen. This world one more time needs a church. Amen. That will say no, Tobiah. No, Sambala. Amen. You're not taking away this stone. Can't have it, devil. You can't have it. You've tried to put it out before. 
Amen. The world's tried to blow it out. I appreciate that the world's tried to stomp it out for years. Amen. But bless God, it's the last thing I'll do. The devil's not getting my stone. He's not getting the power of God in my life. He's not taking away the fire that burns in my soul tonight. No, he's tried, but he'll not get it. I'm building up the walls and I won't come down. I'm guarding the stone of the Holy Ghost and fire. Why? I've got two boys I'm trying to raise. Hallelujah. You hearing me tonight? I've got two little boys that I want to raise up in the fire. I want to raise them up in the power of God. I want them, amen, not to talk about and hear daddy talk about what we used to do and what we used to have and what we used to be. I mean, I want them to stand up and say, my daddy, my daddy, my mama, my pastor, my choir, my musicians, my church is full of the Holy Ghost. We still have revival. We still have a move of God. We still see the glory of the Lord. Amen. Coming down. Amen. And it's my job to protect it and to guard it. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, amen, the Holy Ghost set upon them. And this day we're setting on the Holy Ghost. Yes, we are. And while we sat on it, the devil's coming right out from underneath of us. And he's taking the stone of Holy Ghost and fire. There's one more stone that I've got to preach tonight and I'll be through. The Bible says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. The devil would love to rob the stone of Pentecostal praise and worship unto God. And he has done well. He has done well. I can understand in the Baptist church. I can understand in a Nazarene church. I can understand, amen, in a Catholic church or Jehovah's Witness or Mormon tabernacle, but I cannot understand in a Pentecostal church. I cannot understand it. I'll tell you what has happened, friend. I'll tell you what has happened. Amen. I want to tell you something, friend. Amen. That stone of praise and, and worship unto the Lord. Amen. I'm talking about old time praise, old time worship in the power and the presence of God Almighty shouting and rejoicing. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Amen. I was brought up in it, brother and sister. I know what it's about, but I'm seeing every year that passes us by. Amen. More and more and more. Our Pentecostal churches are becoming dead and dry. There is no worship. There's no praise. There's no adoration. There's no glorifying God. There's no rejoicing anymore in the house of the Lord. I want to tell you something. What has hurt us and what has killed us and has caused the dead, the enemy, to come in and rob the stone of praise. I I understand it's the charismatic movement. I understand, amen, uh, some other places and people uh, that have totally, uh, amen, warped, uh, amen, uh, praise and worship. Uh, they've taken it into such degree, uh, amen, that it's caused a lot of us uh, to sit there, amen, dead on our pew, uh, never raise our hands in church, uh, never stand up to praise Him, uh, never break out in a Holy Ghost dance, uh, amen, unto God Almighty. Uh, I don't know about you. But I read in my Bible that my God still inhabits the praises of his people. He still wants us to magnify the Lord together and exalt his name. Bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He wants us to praise him. Um... <sighs> 
I told you the other night I'm tired of being a cheerleader. I'm tired of bringing pom-poms to the pulpit. We ought to have the man, the blood, the healing, the Holy Ghost inside of our soul that makes us want to praise him. But I'm afraid what so-and-so is going to say. I'm afraid of what so-and-so is going to preach about. I'm afraid of what so-and-so is going to label me. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? They didn't redeem me. They didn't save me. They didn't heal me. They didn't baptize me. God, heal me when I was sick. Save me when I was lost. Baptize me when I was hungry. He deserves the praise. You're not taking it from my church, devil. You're not taking it from my choir. You're not taking it from my pulpit. You're not taking it from my pew. No, I will praise him for he is worthy. But what do you mean, preacher? What about, what about if you, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm just afraid anymore to do anything. I'm nervous. I, I, I'm afraid that I, I had this before they ever got it. I had this before they ever knew what to do with it. I knew about this old time praise before they ever came along and made it an ugly word in the church. I knew about praise before they ever started barking like dogs and acting cry. I knew what God had done for me. I knew what God had brought me through. I knew what God had blessed me with. I will praise him. You say, preacher, you're just trying to work something up. No, no, no. I'm just trying you to reach down in your soul like David did. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. The devil, friend, has robbed it from many people. I know folks that used to break out in praise. I know folks, amen, they used to just get right in there. And it hurts me when I come back and see folks, amen, that have allowed the enemy, amen, to steal the stone of praise and worship, amen, in the midst of their heart. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm telling you, there's still a praise unto my God that he likes tonight. There's still a praise that God likes tonight. There's still a worship. There's still a run. There's still a shout. There's still a joy that pleases my God tonight. The stone of praise. The stone of praise. Hallelujah. time you really gave God praise when's the last time you really worshipped him come on I'm talking about more than influence tonight I'm talking about something on the inside of you won't stop until you have glorified the Savior until you have exalted the name of Jesus yes there's nothing wrong with praising your God don't let him rub that stone from your family, your heart, your church. Praise him. Praise him. Worship the master. Oh, God. We don't even realize it anymore, but we can be halfway through a service before somebody ever lifts a hand to praise God. 
We can be halfway through camp meeting, meeting just like tonight. Hey Amen. There's some of us here tonight. Maybe you haven't really, really threw up those hands and prayed. Since you've been here all week, it's passed you by because it's just not fair. Hey Amen. The enemy has robbed your joy, your praise, your song, your shout. I'm telling you, somebody, get the stone back in your heart. Get the stone back on the wall and give God the praise that is worthy of tonight. Oh, God. Man, I've got to stop. I've got to stop. I've got to stop. <laughs> One preacher said, said he had a job when he was a little boy. Amen. In their little white wooden frame Pentecostal church. And his job, Brother Dove, after every service was to get the offering plate and go around under the altars and the pews picking up all the bobby pins. Amen. That the dear old precious holiness saints of God had shouted down and shouted out of their hair. I don't know about you. And I'm not making fun, brother. But I would to God tonight that I'd see God get a hold of some folks again. Amen. Yeah, I'm talking about the Holy Holy Ghost shout, the Holy Ghost praise, the worship under God. It's not a circus. It's not a put on. It's not a fake. It's not charismatic. It's just a godly thing to do. He's worthy of it tonight. Oh, oh my God, tonight. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just don't want to lose it, Brother Gene. I just don't want to lose it, Brother Turner. I don't want to lose the old time Pentecostal praise of God. Hey, if we don't do it, somebody's going to do it. And it may not be godly. It may not be biblical. Why don't the church that knows how to praise God praise Him tonight? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth tonight. Woo, hallelujah. Mm. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I give you the praise and the glory. <laughs> I'm closing. If the, some music would help me tonight. Listen to this. He said, I sat in the low places behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after their families. Listen. With their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren. <laughs> Fight for your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses. They which build it on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands, wrought in the work and with the other, he held a weapon. Oh, Nehemiah said, I'm going to revive these stones. We're going to take them out of the rubbish and the heap and we're going to, we're going to build this wall. But he said, I want to give you some special instruction. He said, I want you to fight for your brethren, for your daughters, for your sons, for your houses. He said, but the only way you're going to be able to build this wall is you're going to have to have a tool in one hand and you're going to have to have a weapon in another. That means tonight that a weapon, a tool, that they would have to take and very alert.
said you you work with one hand and you you be ready to fight with the other. Because he said you never know when the adversary or your enemy is going to come in. And he said you're going to have to be ready. You're going to have to be alert. You're going to have to guard what you're building and what is precious. I want to encourage every pastor, every preacher, every lay member, or even those that are here tonight, I want to encourage you. Get a tool in your hand and get a weapon in the other. And whatever you do, you fight for your daughter and your son because I'm going to. I'm going to stand on everything I've preached tonight because I believe it. I don't only believe it, it's the Bible. Too many, too many have allowed the enemy to come in because you see, if one stone's taken away, there's a way to get in. I don't care if it's unity, holiness, healing, the blood, the Holy Ghost, or what it is tonight. One stone gone from this wall, brother, and the devil will come in. And he'll rob everything that's precious to us. Is there anybody here tonight that would like to help me guard the stones of Pentecost?